Alright guys, uh, Bazaar Rip here bringing you this world premiere video of Mob of the Dead. Um, we got this after watching the Call of Duty Championship. Just want you guys to check it out. We hope you love it. It's going to be awesome. We, um, oh my god. We're just so looking forward to playing this. We will do a first look on it as well. Um, it's it's going to be... It's gonna be one hell of a zombies map, and these guys, it looks like they actually took their time on this and did some damn good work. So, with that being said, I will leave you to enjoy the rest of the video without my voice, and um, we hope you like it. Uh, comment, like, subscribe, and uh, make sure you check back, because we're gonna have lots of new Black Ops 2 stuff coming in, as well as Borderlands 2, uh, the new games that are coming out, maybe Battlefield 4, uh, Dead Island, and all of that stuff. So. I really appreciate you guys watching, and I'm going to shut up now. <laughs> Baza Rip, signing out. It was a challenge to try and capture something as iconic as Alcatraz. You know about this. This is arguably the most famous prison in the world, and now you're in it. Just the space, you know, the physicality of it, because it's quite claustrophobic. When modern-day prisons are designed, they really consider not intimidating people or making the spaces, you know, as, as least stressful as possible. Well, Alcatraz didn't suffer from those restrictions. They did the research, they went out, studied Alcatraz, not just from books or internet. They were actually there to feel the environment, so it really sets a mood that gets you a little f spooked. Well, we kind of started with the base layout of Alcatraz. The entire island we ended up roughing out uh, in kind of a white box form, and then figuring out what play spaces we wanted to use out of that, what would be the most interesting areas to play in, and the connections between spaces, and spaces that the public doesn't necessarily get to go into. We really did a lot of pushing to, to, to really enhance that psychological horror aspect that we're really looking for. And this is a really good opportunity to really tell something special. Like I got stuck right through the gates to hell! This time around, I feel like it's been identified that there are these side missions that you're going to go out and try to accomplish. Al and the rest of the groups put together this escape plan. But the point is to get the parts and assemble this plane so they can get off the island. We did something new for the first time. We have actually contextual music that goes off. So that's the that's a first for zombies. Um, and it's all based around this horror thriller aspect. Every location will have a specific stinger that you hear when you find it, when you discover it, when you start unraveling the story. We, we start building on the music that you're hearing. And it's really enhancing that experience and going along with it in parallel. Because we wanted to embrace this kind of horror thriller element, we wanted character actors, guys who could really embody someone and then convey emotion. So that's why we went for guys like Ray Liotta, getting in that kind of guy, you know, we wanted the frantic nature. So he plays a character called uh, Billy Handsome, who's this kind of psychopath who would be employed by the mob to kill people in interesting ways. Chaz Palminteri, he plays a guy called Sal DeLuca, an old mob boss. Michael Madsen playing Finn O'Leary. He's kind of worked himself from the floor, you know, from the streets. He's got his hands dirty and the blood in the guts a couple of times. And then we had Joe Pantolano, and he plays Arthur Arlington, who's, uh, who's nicknamed the Weasel. Those guys, they bring a quality and a subtlety and timing that you can't really identify or try to recreate. Bring it on! You start off in the afterlife mode, and that's just going to be you know, what's going on. You're going to try to solve the, the mystery from the second you start. Afterlife, to me, brings a new element, like a new puzzle element. It forces me to think a little bit more or look for the clues or kind of think of zombies on a slightly deeper level. You see clues throughout the map that tell you, ooh, perhaps if I'm in the afterlife, I can interact with this object, or there's some puzzle going on here that I need to be in the afterlife. Back east, I whacked a dirty dentist with one of these. Took forever. Alcatraz has a, a Civil War kind of fort background before it turned into a penitentiary. And so we had this kind of backstory, the idea that the warden would have collected Civil War weaponry. One of them is, uh, is a blundergat. It's a, it's a fictional weapon, but the idea of the, the combination between a, a blunderbuss and a, and a Gatling gun. And possibly, it might be a way of upgrading it to a more uh, fantastical weapon that the, the players may find. You don't gotta go sometime from me. You just went now. There's uh, one main zombie, one big zombie that's gonna come through and, and wreak havoc on your life. 
he'll lock down the perk machine, he'll close down the box, so you have to pay to get that open again. So you don't want him to interfere with your process. Now's a good time to pick a fight. So it's a fun challenge. It keeps things moving forward. In terms of perks, we have a new perk called Electric Cherry. When you reload, it gives a shock around, which scales over time. I was asking for a big ball. There is so much to experience in this map. Every time I play it, there's a new tactic to take, a new experience, a new objective to go for. But there's also this layer of things that we aren't exactly exposing to the players right off the bat and will need to be discovered. So let me go. Is it the calling we We've got the undead in there, we've got these historical elements, and these fantastic actors all seem to be uh, with peace with each other in this kind of same world. So it's, it's magical, and our team is incredibly excited by it.